Xi Jinping tries to woo American CEOs. China's Coast Guard warns the Philippines not to let China do this. And China threatens mass shootings in the U.S. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Chinese leader Xi Jinping met with foreign business leaders this week amid jitters over the economy. Yeah, no big deal, just jitters for absolutely nothing. Uh, pay no attention to that. The Chinese Communist Party is doing great. Probably Xi Jinping just wants to share his abundance with America. Although personally, I wish China would share less with America. But this must be why Xi invited all these American CEOs to China. He even shook hands with each of them personally. That's how you know he's trustworthy. And also apparently how you know that you should invest in China. Look at these smiling idiots. Wow, he shook my hand. I'm never gonna wash this hand again. They really have learned nothing. Xi Jinping told the CEOs that China's growth prospects remain bright. Bright, like a dying star flaring one more time before collapsing into a black hole. But hopefully the CEOs aren't actually buying it. Investing in China right now is a terrible idea. Come back and watch this video in a year or two and you'll realize I told you so. The only upward trend in China's economy right now is the number of lies the CCP tells. Also this week, Xi Jinping met with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, also known as Holland, where Dutch people come from. Also, clogs. Imagine living in an apartment building in the Netherlands. It must constantly sound like your upstairs neighbor is paddling your ceiling. Anyway, the context of this meeting is a few months ago, the Netherlands blocked the Dutch company ASML from exporting semiconductor chip making equipment to China. This was yet another blow to the CCP, especially after the US restricted the export of chips to China in 2023. The US had pressured the Netherlands to do the same. So Xi Jinping gave the Dutch prime minister some friendly advice. He said, restricting technology access won't stop China's advance. That's right. Trying to stop China's advance won't stop China's advance. So stop trying to stop China's advance. Not that we care because it totally doesn't matter to us. We're doing fine. After all, China's growth prospects remain bright. Speaking of China doing fine, See how far China is willing to go to beat out Australia on trade. More after the break. Welcome back. China has won a World Trade Organization dispute with Australia three years after Australia put tariffs on certain Chinese steel products. Good thing, too. Australia's steel tariffs were totally unjustified, at least according to China, because tariffs on China are never justified. But tariffs by China, totally justified. For example, in 2020, China banned or put tariffs on a lot of Australian goods, including Australian wine, barley, coal, cotton, timber, lobster, red meat, and hunky actors who are so good at doing American accents, you completely forgot they're Australian. Okay, they didn't actually put a tariff on actors, but they should have. Australians are hiding among us and they're taking our jobs. Weirdly though, there were no Chinese restrictions on Australian iron ore, which China uses to make steel, which is then subsidized and sells back to Australia to push out Australian competitors, which is why Australia put those tariffs on Chinese steel in the first place. At least according to Australia. According to China, they did it for no other reason than their big meanies who asked for an investigation into where COVID came from. Man, what kind of idiot would side with China on this? China has successfully used the WTO to force Australia to remove its steel tariffs. Meanwhile, China is keeping some of its own restrictions on Australian imports like wine and barley. And yet Australia's trade minister conceded, saying Australia accepted the WTO's ruling and supported a rules-based trading system. Maybe it isn't the smartest idea to keep playing a rules-based game where the biggest rule is China wins no matter what. This is an example of the CCP's legal warfare. They use the rules-based system to attack countries that try to follow the rules, while ignoring the rules themselves, especially when it comes to the South China Sea. What's the solution? 
appeal the ruling, and let the ruling sit in legal limbo forever. That's right, never stop suing and keep them in court indefinitely. This is the best possible way Australians can pretend to be American. Or if that doesn't work, just ignore any WTO rulings in favor of China, because apparently you don't get in trouble for ignoring the rules. Speaking of the CCP's legal warfare, China has opened a WTO dispute against the US for subsidies meant to protect America's electric vehicle industry. In the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act, the US Congress allocated money to support green industries in the US. The subsidies cannot go to support products made in China, and that's what China is complaining about. Of course, this has nothing to do with exporting goods to China, so I don't even see how there's a dispute here. But that doesn't matter. How dare the US support its own industry? This is like a random guy being mad that a mother is feeding her own child instead of him. Why aren't I getting any split peas? China said it was launching the proceedings to safeguard the legitimate interests of the Chinese electric vehicle industry and to maintain a fair level playing field of competition for the global market. Yeah, level playing field, where China gets to flood the world with its own EVs. Honestly, if you trust the CCP at this point, you'd have to be as stupid as, well, these guys. Remember, wash your hands, fellas. And after the break, the Chinese Coast Guard is getting even crazier in the South China Sea. Welcome back. The Chinese Coast Guard has attacked a Filipino boat with water cannons. Again. This may sound like a repeat of my episode three weeks ago, but I assure you, this is a totally separate incident that happened this past Saturday. Who do they think they are? Stanley Spadowski from UHF letting them take a drink from the fire hose after finding the marble in the oatmeal? I know that was a super obscure reference, but considering how often I have to report on China doing this over and over again, I'm running out of material here. In response, the Philippines logged its strongest protest against China. And then China's defense ministry issued a warning to the Philippines. They said, I kid you not, we warned the Philippines to stop making any remarks that may lead to the intensification of conflicts and escalation of the situation. Yes, China does this, and then warns the Philippines to stop escalating the conflict by telling people about it. What do they want them to say when people ask why they're so wet? We're not wet, we're just dryness impaired. On the aggression scale, I think we've gotten all the way to be aggressive, be aggressive. You know who else the CCP is targeting in a super aggressive militant way? These guys. Yes, Shen Yun, the billboard people. Their slogan is China before communism. Hmm. I wonder why the CCP hates them. Back in January, I did an episode about some of the ways the CCP is going after Shen Yun, like by writing threatening letters from the Chinese embassy to local politicians or journalists telling them not to see Shen Yun, which inevitably made them want to go see Shen Yun. Well, apparently the CCP is realizing those tactics didn't work, so they've come up with even stupider tactics. They started using hired thugs to make bomb threats and mass shooting threats against Shen Yun dancers. Shen Yun has their dance training school in upstate New York at a place called Dragon Springs. A lot of Shen Yun's dance students are teenagers, and most Shen Yun dancers practice Falun Gong, a meditation practice that's banned in China because look how dangerous Falun Gong is. Now, according to the Epic Times, Shen Yun received a series of emails that claimed explosives were placed at its headquarters in upstate New York and that individuals will sneak onto the property, shoot everyone on site, and throw grenades. Throw grenades? Well, the CCP better hope their hired thugs are more skilled than their soldiers, but it gets even weirder. Another email said, multiple C4 plastic bombs have been placed in various locations in the Dragon Springs Temple. If you don't want to see the Dragon Springs Temple to be turned into ruins, then transfer $58 million before 3 p.m. tomorrow to my PayPal account. Hold on, he wants $58 million through PayPal. This has got to be the world's stupidest ransomer. Some advice, bro. Ask for Bitcoin, or at least unmarked non-sequential bills. But PayPal? PayPal takes a 3% fee. There goes $1.7 million of your money down the drain. Do you have no financial sense? Also, the FBI would be able to track and arrest you immediately. Now, if you're wondering why this is the first you've heard about this incident, just ask Google. I Google Shen Yun bomb threat, and Google told me there aren't many great matches for your search. 
which is weird because there are 222,000 results. It almost seems like Google is helping the CCP censor Shenyun, but surely that couldn't be the case because social media companies do not engage in censorship. The US and Britain both accused China-linked hackers of malicious cyber campaigns this week. The UK revealed Chinese hackers accessed the names and addresses of anyone in Britain registered to vote between 2014 and 2022. Separately, the US Justice Department called out a Chinese state-linked hacking group that spent 14 years targeting US and foreign critics, businesses, and political officials. China responded by completely denying everything and saying China does not encourage, support, or condone cyber attacks. And if you're stupid enough to believe that, you should go invest in China. Every week I get lots of questions from China Uncensored fans, especially those of you who directly support China Uncensored through Patreon or Locals. You are the lifeblood of this show. So as a thank you, I answer your questions at the end of some of my episodes. And today's question comes from Matthew Nuttall. As someone living in Hong Kong and grew up here, what kind of timeline would you suggest for someone who no longer feels this city has their interests in mind or is in any way aligned with their morals? I'm in an industry that is hard to start over in. I feel like I'm the crazy guy in my group saying that every not so nuanced sign leads to an unlivable situation. And I'm wondering how big of a sacrifice should I be making to punch out now versus squeezing the last bit of family legacy or roots I have in this place to not delay the probable inevitable outcome. Maybe it boils down to what's your opinion on the timeline where I need to pull my head out of the sand? And what do you think is the most probable situation in China and mostly Hong Kong would you expect? Matthew, thanks for bringing that up. To me, Hong Kong looks like this, a slow, inevitable decline that no one's really happy with. The passage of Article 23, the national security law, is just the latest. Now that it's in place, there's gonna be more. Things like more mass surveillance, internet restrictions, patriotic education for your kids, replacing Cantonese with Mandarin, Chinese state takeovers of certain businesses. Sadly, I don't think there's a way for Hong Kongers to stop this downward trend on their own. The only hope is that citizens across China, and I mean mainland China, learn from the spirit of the 2014 and 2019 Hong Kong protests and stand up to the Chinese Communist Party itself. I don't have a timeline for that. I also don't have a timeline for when each terrible thing is going to happen to Hong Kong. But if it were me living in Hong Kong, I'd try to get out as soon as possible. Who knows if they're going to start putting exit bans on people like in the mainland. But you gotta do what's best for you, Matthew. I'm sorry your situation's so tough. I also want to thank you for signing up on Patreon to support the show. We want to be able to keep covering what's happening in Hong Kong, and we couldn't do it without you. And to everyone else, be like Matthew. Pledge a dollar or more over on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You can also click that orange button. And if you also want to support me, check out my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming, where I talk about controversial topics by hiding them in gaming content. Click on this one and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.